Thomas Akempis writes, We think sometimes to please others by our company, and we rather displease them with those bad qualities which they discover in us. This comment made me smile. We can think that everybody must enjoy our company, but the reality may not be quite so rosy. Maybe our being with them is the surest way to displease them. That's a hard pill to swallow. On the other hand, we shouldn't be desperate to please men, please people. Men pleasers can't be God pleasers as well. If they like us, that's fine. If they don't, that too is fine. We are not to be anxious about anything, including people's opinions of us. But neither, of course, should we aim to displease them or be dismissive if we've displeased them. Now, previous to the quote which, with which I began, Thomas Akempis was speaking about loving others and serving them. That's his goal, love and service. Then he thinks of the situation where we are disappointing to people because of some bad quality which they've discovered in us. And I'm reminded of that proverb, a fly in the ointment ruins it all, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. If you open a pot of ointment and find a fly in there, you throw the lot away. You don't try to take the fly out and use the rest. The ointment has displeased you. But this is Thomas Akempis' concern, love and the ability to serve. We love others by serving them, by being available for them, being a help in whatever way we can, maybe advising, warning, encouraging, or just enjoying their company. And what a pity it is when a bad quality in us affects our ability to serve. Like the fly in the ointment, I may not be a help to people, I may even be a hindrance or a stumbling block. I need to be aware of this possibility and be prepared to accept it robustly and sensibly. God loves me and wants to help. The fly can be so harmless in our eyes, but so annoying to others. For instance, we've probably all met the person who is, say, generous enough, but has a habit of asking where their gift is and are we using it. They look for the picture on the wall or the tie or the necklace. We come to dread their gifts, generous though they may be. The fly can be something I do or that I don't do, such as not apologising for something I've said or done. We mustn't take it for granted that it's obvious that we're sorry. It's not obvious. And it's important to verbalise it, otherwise it's a sin of omission and another one of those flies. Or we couch our apology in slippery words like, I'm sorry if you're offended, instead of, sorry, I offended you. I said that we must be prepared to robustly accept this possibility about ourselves. It isn't the end of the world. There are some things we can do about it. After all, in the words of the early church fathers, we may be the only gospel that an unbeliever ever reads. We are, as it were, a full-colour illustration within the good book. Now, the first thing to do is to be aware of our own faults, and we all have them. If we can't see our faults, that in itself is a fault. Somebody once said, I've got blind spots, but I know where they are. We may need to ask God to show us our faults. Avoid asking a friend if you want to keep the friend. Ask God. He'll show us if we're humble and robust enough to hear and receive. He shows us not to condemn us, but to give us an idea of where we could be receiving his special empowering grace to help us eliminate the fault. We should choose one on which to focus. We should even be able to reverse it and so add a virtue to our characters, but work on one at a time and then move on. Living is an art that we learn in stages. Secondly, and this isn't so obvious, we must learn discretion, of not expressing every thought that comes into our heads. This seems to be particularly important as we are working on our personal failings. It can be a temptation to talk to others about it, especially if we've met with some success in overcoming a fault. It's like Stan said to Ollie, after years of not seeing one another, you know I used to be dumb, well I'm not anymore. The next half hour, 
was to prove that nothing had changed. So keep it quiet. Don't draw any attention to yourself or your inner strivings. Let it be between you and God. If the change is genuine, you can be sure it'll be noticed by others and appreciated. May the Lord help us to recognize those characteristics that others find difficult and to cooperate with God in removing them.